our podcast was defrauded. We were stolen from. Um, we were taken advantage of. A lot of ways to say it. Uh, the company that did it is Cast Media, and the man that did it is Colin Thompson. If anybody wants to get refreshed on Colin Thompson of Cast Media, who thought he was going to get away unscathed with Owen, not only us a significant amount of money, but now we've come to find out all kinds of people significant amounts of money. So I kind of left that alone, and then I found out recently that Cast had decided to not pay us the money that they owe, that they owe us from working, from the reads that we'd already done. This was the only public place I could do this where I feel like it would have some effect because to me, this guy's like the Bernie Madoff of podcasting. Colin Thompson was a music major who discovered podcasting shortly after moving to LA in 2014. He would start his own podcast, The Modern Music Show, where he would interview artists and discuss the business side of the industry. The show only lasted a couple of months, but helped establish some connections between Colin and other up-and-coming podcasters. With many of them needing help with audio editing and other technical aspects of broadcasting, Colin would use his experience from college and offer these services in exchange for an hourly fee. And Cast Media was born in 2015. But I got plugged in through that process to Facebook groups of like indie podcasters trying to figure out how to do it and all that stuff. And a lot of them were just asking questions about, you know, the audio, like pure, like editing audio stuff, which is, you know, when you've done that on the music side of things, it's like podcasting is kind of a piece of cake. As his client's demands began to broaden from simple editing to full on social media management, Colin started to see the greater potential in this new business. It kind of spiraled out of control from there because then they would just ask me, oh, do you write show notes? Do you write descriptions? Do you do, you know, Twitter posts about it? Do you do Instagram images about it? Will you follow up with my guest afterwards? And the answer to all of those questions was yes, of course. <laughs> of course I do all of those things and then like figure it out. Right. Um, in order to differentiate himself from other networks and draw in more established names, Colin offered a much more holistic partnership than was standard at the time. So the structure of our deal normally and we do this deal mostly with influencers or celebrities or comedians or somebody who has some existing audience to leverage is that we run everything soup to nuts and we take a cut and it's a significant cut. It's not over the top, but it's significant enough. Instead of just acting as an ad sales team, Cast Media would provide hosting, studio spaces, producers, editors, anything they could to entice already successful shows. This strategy proved effective, and Cast was able to bring on The Fighter and the Kid, Impulsive, This Past Weekend, and countless other popular properties. Business appeared to be booming and everything operating smoothly, until several creators suddenly stopped receiving advertiser money. When they would approach Colin, he would only pay them a portion of what was owed and manufacture some excuse as to why the money wasn't available. These were for ad slots that had been sold months in advance, so there was plenty of skepticism among the creators. All of this would eventually be made public by Jim Cornette on July 22nd, where he would allege that Colin had taken the ad money from the more popular shows on the network and invested it in brand new podcasts owned by Cast Media. But what this alleged weasel does is he takes our money that our advertisers paid for the advertising on our shows and invests it back in another part of his company that is helping produce other people's programs. This is supported by an interview of Colin from 2019, where he explicitly mentions his willingness to take risks and engage in this business model. That's how we're different from Cadence or Podcast One or any of those people, because we're very collaborative. We start shows from the ground up a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times. And we take on risk, you know? Most of those other people, they're very happy to sign deals with shows that are doing 100, 200, 300, 400,000 downloads per episode. And I am too. I'm very happy to sign those deals too. But what we also do is sign deals at zero because we're willing to risk and bet on the right shows and that they're going to be successful in the future. These new shows would fail to attract an audience and cast media would suddenly see itself facing bankruptcy. And then he called me three months later to say that Colin has gone bankrupt, Cass has gone bankrupt, and he's starting a new company, which I didn't know you could do, uh, and he would like to have myself and Tony back on his new company. In a desperate attempt to save himself, 
Colin would begin working on a deal to sell off certain cast media assets to Podcast One, a competing network. He would offer the defrauded creators a percentage of the money owed in cash and the rest in Podcast One stock, which is set to go public very soon. And then here's the accounts payable estimated. We will get, based on the amount they claim that they currently owe us, which doesn't even include the amount they said they were going to pay us for the next two payments, they were going to pay us a third in cash. A third in cash over 24 months. And then a third converted to public stock over 24 months. So we would get, (laughs) allegedly, a third of the money that they're claiming here, not including the other money they owe us, and then a third of that money we would have to wait for two years, I guess in the middle of our two-year, three-year term, whatever the f*** that is, to get that money, and then we would have to get stock that we would be forced to hold on to for two years in a bullsh** company that no one wants the f***ing stock of. And that we don't want to be involved with to begin with. Theo mentions that Podcast One is offering Colin a job. And the worst part to me was I said, well, what about Colin Thompson? I said, that guy's a crook. And they said he's going to be, um, he'll be, they said we felt like he's done a good job and that he would be part of the team still. Which legitimizes Jim's speculation that they're helping this scumbag and supporting how he operates. But now he also, at the same point, he copied on this email the CEO of Live One, a guy named Robert Ellen. And one would think that he wouldn't, if, if he's talking to somebody who's basically told them, look, if you don't pay us our money that you owe us, we're going to raise enough of a stink. It'll screw your goddamn scam up your plot in here. One would think that he wouldn't copy on the email the, the fucking head of the company that he's trying to get bought by unless this guy's in on it too. In Jim's second video on Colin, he brings up the constant international vacations and lavish lifestyle showcased on Colin's Instagram, which he has since privated. We're hearing from people because the only social media he apparently is active on is his Instagram, which is now private. He's been living it up and having a good time with his wife in Las Vegas. Also, we understand maybe taking some international vacations jetting around the world. The other thing we started hearing from people about is that apparently he's been bragging about a $2 million custom home. Jim went on to release a total of six videos on the incident, leading others to speak up, such as Jason Ellis and now Theo Vaughn. With Theo's massive platform putting a spotlight on this issue, it's only a matter of time before the entire company implodes. It goes to show that, just like YouTube networks of old, podcast networks are largely ran by incompetent crooks with no regard for their clientele. Hopefully this guy goes broke, and the people over at Podcast One protecting him receive some backlash as well. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe. Thank you for watching.